Hello everyone, I'm JG and welcome back to Music Forever, where today I'm going to be bringing you guys a bit of a different video than anything I've done recently on the channel. Today I am going to be covering several different albums that I heard this year that for one reason or another I didn't have a chance to review. I mentioned in a recent update video that I had a particularly busy uh, last few months of the year due to my schoolwork and because of that I just could not listen to uh, a lot of the stuff I wanted to listen to. I couldn't review a lot of the stuff I wanted to review, but you know, I've spent more time now that I've finished up my last semester listening to more music, and uh, I still want to talk about some of these records, so today I'm going to be quickly running through a lot of the projects that I wanted to talk about, and sharing with you briefly my thoughts on them. Of course, uh, the stuff I'm going to be talking about today, it's not going to be like a real review I would do on the channel, just because I want to keep things short here, and of course I just do not have the time to make a full review for every one of these projects. So don't really take every segment of this video as being like a review as much as it is just sharing with you guys my quick thoughts on these projects and really whether or not you should check them out because um, there are some really good albums I'm going to be talking about here today that I think are very much worth your time. It's a shame that I didn't have the time to get to reviewing some of these in full. But uh, yeah, I think that really covers most of what I wanted to say here today. So let's get started by talking about the first uh, record that I wanted to cover today. Prior to hearing this record, I had never heard a full-length Amine project before, but uh, I was pleasantly surprised uh, when listening to this thing. I'm really happy that I checked this record out because this is the kind of hip-hop record that appeals to a lot of what I like in the genre. I mean, I don't think this record is necessarily like reinventing the wheel when it comes to hip-hop or anything like that, but there's just a lot of elements here on this project that I just happen to really enjoy, and the fact that a lot of them appear on this record together just makes me enjoy this thing a real, you know, just a lot when I listen to it from start to finish. The production on this thing is really colorful, there's a lot of variety in it. When it comes to the different sounds and styles on the play, on you know, display here on this project, there's a lot to really enjoy as well. You'll have really fun upbeat cuts on this thing, you'll have more introspective moments on this thing as well, some more aggressive cuts too. There's just a good amount of variety that you get here, and uh, if you like a good amount of variety from a hip-hop record, I think this project uh, is one that you'll enjoy on that uh, front of things. I think Aminé's performances on this thing are pretty great as well. His rapping on this thing is pretty great. His singing here is fantastic too. The feature selection here on this project is really excellent as well. A pretty diverse set of features as well, and I think this adds to just uh, the amount of different sounds and ideas on display here in this project. Overall, Limbo was just a record that I thought was really fun from start to finish. Like I said before, uh, not a project that really reinvents the wheel or anything like that, but it has enough really great stuff in it to make it a worthwhile listen and one that I really enjoy coming back to every so often just because there's a good amount of variety here, lots of great performances. If you like hip-hop, definitely check this thing out. This is a cover album from Billy Joe Armstrong of Green Day. And a lot of these tracks had been premiered over the course of the year, over the course of the pandemic that, of course, we're all currently experiencing. And I didn't really have the highest of expectations coming into this thing, just because, you know, it's a cover album, and, you know, cover albums are usually mediocre when it comes to the quality of them. And really, this project here is pretty mediocre when it comes to the quality of it, too. It's just not the most standout thing that I've listened to this year. I mean, all the performances on this thing are pretty okay. The song selection is pretty fine, I guess. I mean, it's not the most uh, ideal tracks that I would personally want to see uh, Billy Joe or you know Green Day as a whole, I guess, cover. But I still think it's a pretty okay selection of tracks. The album doesn't feel you know super bloated or anything like that either, which is also a good thing. But it just feels like a pretty you know typical covers album through and through and very little of it, I think, is really worth returning to. And I say that as a massive fan of Green Day and Billy Joe's music, but uh, this project here, it's just kind of forgettable. I understand, uh, to some extent, why that is, given that this was just, you know, put out, uh, you know, the individual tracks on this thing were put out just every so often over the course of quarantine, I guess, uh, to serve as some content for people to enjoy, and that's respectable, but the end result of this record not really something I think I'll come back to. I mean, it's not awful. It is better than the actual album Green Day dropped earlier this year, but yeah, it's just pretty mediocre in my opinion. If you're a hardcore Green Day fan, maybe it's worth giving a listen to to see if you'll like it or not, but you know, if you're not in that demographic, um, I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this. 
This is the second album from Green Day Side Project, The Network. I'm a pretty big Green Day fan, as I just said when talking about the Billy Joe record, and uh, I was uh, looking forward to this project, I guess in some sense, because I thought the first Network album that came out in 2003 was enjoyable. It's not like one of my favorite Green Day related releases or anything, but for what it is, I think it's a fun project, and uh, every so often I do return to it. And this project here, in you know some regards, it does do a decent job at following up that first record, but it also does suffer from some problems that that debut record doesn't. Uh, it does have a lot of the same quirkiness that that first album did. It also has a lot of that synth work that that first album had too. And both of these things are really nice to see. Uh, I think it gives this record a good amount of personality, but I think this record kind of suffers in the fact that it is uh, a bit bloated. There's a lot of songs here on this record, and the album reaches almost an hour in length, whereas the first record was a lot shorter at around a half an hour in length, and uh, despite the fact that the song lengths on the thing were kind of short, it felt like this nice condensed uh, release, whereas this thing, it feels really massive, and uh, after a certain point, it just starts to feel way too long for its own good, uh, and that does make coming back to this thing a bit of a pain. I would have really appreciated if this was a bit shorter. And there are some cuts on this thing that do feel just like kind of forgettable in the grander scheme of things, and despite the fact that there's a lot of really quirky personality injected into this record, I feel there's a lot of moments where the band doesn't really take full advantage of some of the lyrical ideas that they're working with, or some of the instrumental ideas even that they're working with. It uh, kind of feels like it has the opposite problem that Father of All had earlier this year. That was a project that I felt like had like no personality to it whatsoever, and it just ended up being really boring because of that. Whereas this record, it has a ton of personality to it, but almost to a fault. Uh, almost where, to the point where like the band is juggling so many ideas that it seems like they don't really have the time to execute any of them to their fullest extent. Though I will say that this is a much better record than Father of All. Uh, I think most of the songs on this thing are a lot more enjoyable than even the best off of that record. The hook work here on this thing is a bit more memorable. And just the fact that it has personality is an improvement. So, I mean, you know, if you like Green Day, especially the first Network album that they did, this is worth giving a listen to. But if you didn't like that first Network album, and if, generally speaking, you don't care for Green Day, uh, this record is probably not for you. Personally, I think it's just kind of an average listen, but... Uh, probably the best Green Day related project from this year for what that's worth. Bring Me the Horizon are certainly uh, making themselves an interesting name in mainstream rock and metal with how uh, eclectic they can be as a band over the past few years. You know, while most bands from the scene they may, you know, initially emerged from have kind of faded into obscurity, these guys still uh, get a good amount of attention thrown their way and still put out some pretty good music every so often, though I do feel over the past few years it has been kind of hit or miss at times. You know, they put out projects like That's the Spirit, which I really enjoyed for the most part, but on the other hand, they also had the EP they put out last year, which while I admired a lot of the experimentation on that thing, I didn't really enjoy it all that much. But this new EP from them was one that I actually ended up really enjoying a lot. I think this EP does a lot of what I like from this band and a nice concise package. It strikes a really nice balance between the heavier side of the band and the more accessible pop side of the band too. All the tracks on this thing have a nice thick heavy sound to them, this almost industrial-like influence. I wasn't really surprised to find out that Mick Gordon, who is known for doing the soundtracks for the newest Doom games, had his hands in some of the production here on this thing, because a lot of the instrumentals here on this record feel very reminiscent of the general sound uh, and feel that a lot of the tracks on those two soundtracks had going for them. And uh, when it comes to the band themselves, they're doing a great job when it comes to the performances of the instrumentals in these tracks, and the hooks on this record are really great too, some of the catchiest that the band has penned to date. And I also really like how you get a good amount of variety on this project, too. You'll have really aggressive cuts like the opener, Dear Diary. You'll have, uh, you know, your more pop moments on this thing, like uh, 1x1 or The Closer, for example. And you even have the track on this thing, Kingslayer, with Baby Metal, which is a track that really combines the best elements of both Bring Me the Horizon and Baby Metal to make one of my favorite songs from either of these artists. It's just a really phenomenal track, a really fun track, too. 
it just uh, is such a super fun song to listen to. One of the best pop metal tracks I've heard in years. And uh, yeah, it's just a fantastic moment on this thing. And it's a moment where the band's experimentation and their willingness to collaborate uh, with other artists really pays off uh, to great effect here. Really, this is just a super concise, fun collection of pop metal tracks. And uh, truth be told, I really don't even care all that much for the closer here on this thing. I think it's kind of a, a dull, boring way to end off the project. But even despite the fact that I don't really care for that track, this record, or this EP, is still one of my favorites of the year just because of how, you know, concise and fun the majority of it is. If you're looking for some really good pop metal, this is definitely a release that you need to hear. Dominic Fife was a figure that I was pretty excited to see what he was going to do uh, with his music going forward, considering I thought that Three Nights was a pretty enjoyable song, not the most original thing ever, but it was fun for what it was, and uh, it just seemed like he was an artist who could very well just blow up and become a big artist that I could also see myself enjoying, so I was very excited to see what he was going to do on his debut full-length album, and I gotta say, I was pretty disappointed by this release. I mean, I don't think this is an awful album, necessarily, but um, it's just very, you know, bland, I guess. Very little of it really stands out to me. A lot of the instrumentals on this thing are pretty mediocre. A lot of the vocal performances on this thing are fine, but again, nothing really all that special. A lot of the tracks on this thing really lack um, solid, catchy hooks to them as well, unlike a track like Three Nights, for example, which has had a massive, infectious hook to it. The only song on this thing that really comes close to that track when it t comes to, you know, being catchy and fun is Vampire, but even that song is, uh, despite being the best song on this thing in my opinion, it's still a lot weaker than Three Nights was, and it's still nowhere near as memorable. And when it comes to the lyrics here on this project, they're also pretty weak too. For the most part, they're just pretty, you know, lacking in substance and they're just not super interesting. You don't really get a ton of Fike's personality from the lyrics here on this project, which is a bit of a shame, seeming that uh, he does have a pretty interesting backstory as a person. I think there's a lot of really interesting things he could tell through his music, but for whatever reason, he just seems to not really want to do that here on this record, and most of the lyrics are just really bland. And there are even some moments on this thing where the lyrics are just outright bad, probably the biggest example being the track Cancel Me, where he's talking about wanting to get cancelled, so he can just kind of go back to living a sort of normal life instead of this music career that he's currently on. Even going as far as to say that he wants to be Me too which is just a really strange thing to say. I mean, look, I get the sentiment that uh, the music career and the music industry is a harsh environment, especially in 2020 of all years, and that going back to a normal life certainly has its upsides too. But um, at the same time, uh, this is probably not the way to do it. You know, you don't have to be uh, accused of sexual assault to go back to that life, dude. Just uh, stop making music if that's the case. Don't do anything bad. That's a terrible idea. I mean, I'm sure this track is trying to be uh, playful, but it doesn't really come across that way. It just comes across as being kind of uh, uh, tone deaf in a way, I guess. He's just not very aware of the gravity of some of the stuff he might be saying here on a track like this. And it's also really odd to be talking about wanting to go back to a normal life on, like, a, a debut record like this. Like, he's only been really putting out music in the public eye for a few years now and really only has had one big track and a few smaller songs here or there. It's just a really odd song to have on a project like this, and the, the lyrics certainly don't help it at all. But fortunately, most of the other tracks on this record don't have lyrics anywhere near as bad as that song. For the most part, they're just really bland and generic. And overall, this record just ends up being a pretty big, big disappointment, in my opinion, because I think Fike is a good performer, and I think he has lots of really interesting things he could do with his music, but there's just so many other albums out there in this vein of, you know, pop, R&B, hip-hop, fusion that you could listen to instead of this one that have a lot more personality. So, uh, yeah, uh, I didn't really care for this one. This is the second EP that Isan has dropped this year. The first one was the Telemark EP, which I reviewed back in February. An EP that I thought was overall pretty good, but uh, not one of the greatest of the year or anything quite like that. It was just a pretty solid project. 
And this one here is another interesting follow-up to it. Whereas that EP saw Isan trying to, I guess, go back to his roots in a sense with a bit more of a simplistic style of black metal, this EP moves in a completely different direction with him doing this more pop-focused style of uh, pop metal, which I think actually works out for him quite nicely. I mean, truth be told, in some of his previous releases, I think he's occasionally shown that he could do something like this EP if he wanted to. He has the chops to pull off his clean singing consistently for a po full project like this. He could do something like this if he wanted to. And I think with this EP, he really proves that he could do it really well. Because I think, for the most part, this EP is really enjoyable. The instrumentals here on this thing are really well composed, they sound really nice, they're well performed, and Isan's vocals here on this EP are really great too, and he's able to get up through a lot of really catchy hooks on this project as well. Uh, this is just a really catchy, fun, uh, sort of artsy pop metal release. And even the cover tracks that come towards the very end of this thing, I think, fit in with the core sound that's uh, initially... Uh, shown to the listener and the first few songs on this thing really nicely whereas like on the Telemark EP for example I felt like the covers that came at the end of that thing felt like they belonged on a completely different project than the straightforward black metal tracks that were the original cuts earlier on. I feel like the covers here on this thing work with the other tracks here and it just makes for a very consistently fun and interesting EP. So uh, yeah, I can certainly understand why this EP wouldn't be for everyone, especially if you were really craving some more black metal. But uh, as someone who was kind of curious to see what Isan would do with this style, this didn't disappoint me. And um, I would certainly not mind another release from him in this style. But uh, if this EP is all we get, I'm pretty content with it. This new EP from JPEG Mafia consists of a bunch of tracks that he released over the course of this year. In a way, it's almost like a compilation EP, but it's one that I still think works really well as a complete product, too. Uh, stylistically, if you heard either of the couple albums that he recently dropped in 2018 and 2019, then I think you have a pretty solid idea of what to expect with the, two, uh, with the few songs that you get here on this project because they follow a pretty similar sound in format. The presentation of this thing is just a bit smaller and easier to digest and maybe a bit less conceptual too, but I think it's still just as enjoyable for the most part to listen to. A lot of what I really liked on projects like Veteran and All My Heroes Are Cornballs are still present here on this project and I really appreciated that. The instrumentals here on this thing still have a kind of cloudy, glitchy sound to them that I really like. JPEG Mafia himself is still putting out great performances on this thing. His rapping here is fantastic. His singing when it pops up is really great too. The hooks on these tracks are very memorable and his lyrics still strike a really nice balance between being very insightful, at times kind of funny, and also very quirky and weird as well. The few features that you get here on this project are also pretty enjoyable and overall you just end up getting a really enjoyable collection of tracks here on EP. And uh, if you like JPEG Mafia, especially those last couple of releases from him, then I think you'll also really like this project too. Far from being probably his most essential release so far, but uh, as a project that probably serves as uh, a smaller release between bigger projects, I think this serves its purpose really nicely. And I'm still really excited to see what he's going to do in terms of a full-length release. Hopefully sometime next year, if not then, the year after that. But yeah, this is really good. Check it out. If you've seen any of my previous reviews for any of Jaden's music, you would know that I haven't exactly been the biggest fan of his releases, though I did always feel like there was some potential in those projects, and uh, a part of me does or did really hope that that potential would really shine through eventually someday, but coming into this new mixtape of his, my hopes weren't exactly the highest just because uh, given that this was a mixtape, it seemed to be probably like a smaller scale project, lower stakes, and uh, it probably wouldn't be his best release, but um, it ended up being his best release in my opinion. Honestly, I actually ended up enjoying this thing a decent amount. I mean, I don't think it's great or anything, but this was the first time really I listened to a Jaden project in full and uh, enjoyed most of what I listened to. Uh, I think this is mostly just because some of the uh, ideas that he plays around with here on this thing really work to his benefit. Here on this thing, he plays with some psychedelic hip-hop and psychedelic pop influences. Nothing uh, that's super out there or weird or anything like that. It still fits within his general framework 
for his core sound really nicely, but I think this style fits him well because it provides this kind of laid back sound that I think pairs up with his tone and his voice and his delivery style quite nicely. And I feel like his performances on this thing are some of his best to date too. He just feels a lot more confident performing on these songs than I think he did on any of his previous releases. When he's rapping here on this thing and even when he's singing at times on this project, he just feels a lot more confident behind the mic or you know maybe it does to some extent have to do with some of the instrumentals he's rapping and singing over but i feel like for whatever reason it just works a lot better than it did on previous releases don't get me wrong i certainly have my problems with this mixtape too i think that it's a little bit bloated i think there are some cuts here that definitely could have been cut and when it comes to like you know lyrics there's nothing really all that stand out here on this thing though admittedly this project probably has some of the fewest uh, stinkers when it comes to lyrics too in his catalog, so I guess that's a bonus. Uh, so yeah, overall, I thought that this was a pretty decent mixtape. I mean, again, I don't think it's a great mixtape, but uh, out of all of his full-length releases so far, this is easily my favorite. And uh, a part of me is kind of sad that he probably won't be revisiting the sound on future releases, because uh, quite frankly, I think he could do a little bit more with this too and maybe even produce uh even more interesting results with it but uh yeah at least hopefully the uh charisma behind the mic will carry over into the next project if that's the case uh, i'll definitely have to check out what he does going forward but yeah this was pretty okay um it certainly will have an audience out there if you like Jaden, if you like uh this kind of music even if you haven't really been a fan of it in the past from Jaden specifically i think it's worth at least giving a shot to This is the third in the Man on the Moon series from Kid Cudi, and overall this record left me feeling kind of cold to be honest. I mean, I don't dislike this record, but at the same time, I don't really like it either. I think it's just kind of average overall, though it does certainly have its moments on it that I do think are good. I think uh, my biggest problem with this record is just that in a lot of regards, it feels like Cudi's trying a bit too hard to fit the modern sound in hip-hop. Uh, in a way that doesn't really come all that nicely to him, which is kind of weird because uh, the sound that he really introduced to the world on the first Man of the Moon album uh, would end up being super influential and pretty much was one of the core records that would define the sound in the 2010s, especially in mainstream hip-hop. Cuddy is a massive influence to plenty of artists out there right now that are big in the genre. And it's kind of weird now that hearing him try to replicate them on a lot of the tracks on this thing, but doing so in a way that doesn't really sound all that natural. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of moments on this thing where he's just blatantly trying to take from other artists out there in the scene and not really doing it all that nicely. Especially Travis Scott. There's a lot of moments on this thing that feel very Travis Scott-like. I mean, even the track, uh, She Knows This, which is probably the most blatant Travis Scott ripoff on this project, made me stop, uh, what I was doing while I was listening to this album and actually check to see if Travis had a hidden feature on this track, just because Cuddy sounded so much like Travis here on this, uh, track. And, uh, truthfully, uh, it's one of the more enjoyable tracks on the album for what that's worth, though, honestly, I just kind of wish I was listening to a better Kid Cudi or Travis Scott song than uh, this weird, lesser version of the two. Of course, there are some moments on this project where I think Cudi strays a bit closer to his core sound, uh, the sound that was introduced on the first Man of the Moon. I think some of these moments on the record are some of the nicest and some of the most uh, enjoyable. But even still, there's just a f far too many moments on this project where I feel like He's in this weird middle ground between his core sound and lots of modern hip-hop in a way that doesn't really suit him all that nicely. It feels like a lot of the production here is trying to be very modern, but Cuddy's performances don't really keep up with them in an interesting way. And a lot of the tracks here just kind of end up feeling mediocre or forgettable, and this album just feels like it has a lot of filler because of it. I mean, this isn't a bad album by any means, there are some enjoyable moments on it, but um, yeah, unless you're like a big fan of his or you just happen to really like this style of hip-hop, um, yeah, I can't really say I recommend it all that much. Overall, I think this is a pretty good EP, and I think it's a pretty solid follow-up to Volume 1 as well. One thing about this EP that I really appreciated was that the production here on this thing is probably some of the best that Left at London has had to date. 
it sounds a bit crisper compared to volume one and I think it makes uh, listening to these tracks a bit more enjoyable in that regard. And I also really like the start to this project as well. The first couple of tracks on this thing are a couple of the best that Left of London has put out to date. The opening track here, Do You See Us, is this really angry protest song that I feel like uh, gets its point across really fantastically and is a fantastic start to the project as well. And I like how it's immediately followed by Six Feet, one of the best attempts at a more straightforward pop track that Left at Atlanta has put out to date. I think after this point though, uh, the EP does take a little bit of a dip in terms of quality. Nothing major really. I still think all the songs that follow the opening two are pretty good, but I don't think any of the tracks that follow the opening two on this project are as good as the opening two or even any of the tracks on volume one, uh, despite the fact that I think, again, the production here on this thing is much improved. I still do think that a lot of the other tracks here in the track list are solid though, like I said before. I think the hook work is pretty solid, the instrumentals are pretty fine as well, I think the lyrics are pretty decent too, I just don't think that some of the tracks that come later on in this EP are quite as memorable as some of the uh, earliest cuts from this thing, or like I said before, even any of the songs from Volume 1, but still, if you're looking for some good EPs from this year, uh, this is one that you should definitely have on your radar. This is a pretty good debut record from Megan Thee Stallion. I really uh, enjoyed listening to this thing. I mean, I do have some problems with it. I do think it's a little bit bloated at times. I think that there are some tracks in here that are a bit weaker than uh, some of the other cuts, and some of the features here aren't the greatest, uh, usually not because the performances are terrible, but sometimes just because I don't think some of the featured artists have great chemistry with Megan, and the results can be kind of awkward. But even still, I don't think this album really has any like outright duds in it and the high points on this record are really enjoyable. Megan brings a lot of energy to her performances, she has a lot of charisma behind the mic, a lot of her flows on these tracks are really great too, the instrumentals here are really fun and vibrant as well, and this record certainly does uh, occasionally throw some nice curveballs your way. I especially like the closer on this thing which almost has like this industrial tinge to it. Honestly, I could uh, see myself very much enjoying an entire uh, Megan Thee Stallion album that's like industrial hip-hop, but uh, that probably won't happen given that she's more of a mainstream artist, but uh, if she ever wants to do that, I would be completely on board. But uh, as far as this album goes, and not uh, the theoretical album I'm already coming up with in my mind, I think this is a really great debut. I think it's pretty solid. Uh, there are certainly some er areas that I think could be improved on a little bit, but it's really enjoyable for what it is, and if you like hip-hop, I think it's worth giving a listen to. This was a album that I was looking forward to quite a bit. I enjoyed Rico Nasty's mixtape from last year, Anger Management, with Kenny Beats quite a bit, and uh, I was hoping to see a lot of her character shine through on this project as well. But overall, uh, this was another project from this year that kind of disappointed me to some extent. I don't think this is a bad album, but I don't really think it's a consistently good one either. I think there are some okay moments on it, uh, but for the most part, I feel like this uh, is just lacking a lot of what I really liked from some of Rico Nasty's previous releases. Uh, the instrumentals here a lot of times feel really generic. Her performances are typically fine, but I don't know, a lot of the energy that she brings to these, tr these tracks can at times feel forced or maybe just not completely there. Um, it just leaves a lot of these songs feeling like filler, and uh, this album isn't particularly long. It's less than 40 minutes in length. It's not a super lengthy project by any means, but there's a lot of filler on it, and uh, it just leaves me feeling cold. The only track on this thing that I really enjoyed, and it is a track that I did really, really enjoy, it was iPhone. Uh, it's one of my favorite tracks of the year. has this really aggressive, a uh, glitzy feel to it, this almost bubblegum bass like influence. I love the manipulation on the vocals here, uh, providing like this chipmunk effect at times. It's really ridiculous, it feels really massive, but it's also really hard hitting and just bursting at the seams with character. Just a really fantastic track and it's a real darn shame that uh, the rest of the record wasn't as interesting to me because I felt like an entire album's worth of iPhones uh, or tracks at least similar to it in some regard could be really interesting, but for the most part uh, Nightmare Vacation ends up feeling a lot more generic than that. So, I mean, if you like Rico Nasty's previous music, this is a worth, at least, you know, worth giving a listen to, 
but um, I didn't really enjoy it as much as some of her previous efforts. Just a bit of an average album to me. I've seen a few people say that this is their least favorite Blank Banshee release so far, but honestly, I found myself enjoying this record quite a bit, and I say that as someone who uh, in the past uh, likes Blank Banshee's older releases, but has never been like as into them as I think some other people are. Uh, but this record here, there was something about it just really clicked with me. I think it's mostly the tone and the feel of this project. A lot of the uh, instrumentals here, the synth work, it invokes this very clean, uh, but at the same time, this really lush, almost like uh, jungle-like imagery in a way. At least that's kind of what I picture it, like this jungle level from a video game in the 90s or something like that. That's like really colorful and bursting with life and um, all of that jazz, you know, all that stuff that you would love to see in like some 90s platformer that's really colorful or something along those lines. This album, I think, embodies that feel really nicely. And while I wouldn't say this album is like super groundbreaking or anything, the feel that this album invokes when I listen to it is one that uh, I just find myself getting lost in every time I listen to this thing. The feel of this record is just one that feels very fresh, uh, but also very nostalgic in a way too. Again, it invokes feelings of like a video game of years past without like explicitly using lots of sounds and ideas that are in older video games or anything like that. Kind of weird in that regard, but it just invokes those feelings in me. And I think that's a really cool thing about this record and it's a reason why I keep coming back to this thing. So uh, yeah, if you like Vapor Trap, if you like Blank Banshee, uh, I would give this a listen because uh, I can certainly understand why it doesn't click with other people as much as it did for me. Uh, personally, I think it's a pretty great release. This is one of those releases that's already got people really split when it comes to their opinions on this project. Some people really loving it, some people really hating it. I should say that coming into this thing, I liked Cardi's previous releases, but I was never one of those super fans that was like obsessed with the music and just obsessed about the release of this record or anything like that. I was looking forward to this release and I had high hopes for it, but I was not like obsessed or anything like that. And I think that certainly affects my uh, opinions on this record to some extent. Uh, I like this album, I wouldn't say I love it, but I think it's a pretty good release. In fact, I'd probably even say it's better than Die Lit in most regards. I really like uh, some of the experimentation and risks that Cardi took here on this thing, and for the most part, I think they work out. The instrumentals here on this project are pretty good in my opinion. They're not really as cloudy and spacey as those on Die Lit. Instead, they go for a bit more of a rough, dark, menacing sound to them. The production here is a bit rougher overall too, but I think it works to the benefit of a lot of these instrumentals. Cardi's delivery on a lot of these tracks is kind of aggressive, and I think that pairs with the instrumentals in a really nice way. Uh, overall, I think the general sound of this record is one that's really enjoyable, and there's also plenty of catchy moments on this record that I enjoyed as well. However, I do have my problems with this release. I do think that it is a, a little bit bloated. Uh, I, I don't think it's quite as bad as an issue as I had it personally for Die Lit, which is kind of weird considering this is a longer album, but uh, the thing is, here on this project, I don't think that there's too many uh, bad tracks or anything. In fact, I really think that there's a very small amount of tracks that I consider bad. Uh, most of the songs here are pretty good in their own right. It's just that there are some tracks on this thing that don't really do too much different from each other. And because of that, when you're listening to a little over an hour of uh, the same stuff, it does kind of start to get kind of tiresome towards the end. Personally, I'd probably cut this down to like 30, 40 minutes or so. I think this kind of music works best in really short doses, but uh, it, I, personally, I do think it's a little bloated, but it's not a fatal flaw with this project. Listening to this thing for like the hour and three minutes that it runs never felt that bloated to me. I mean, I've certainly heard records that are shorter, that feel longer. Uh, the only track here that I thought was like bad, like outright bad, was the second song on here with Kanye featured on it, and it's mostly just because on this song, Cardi's like really surrendering a lot of what makes his sound unique here on this project, just to have a Kanye feature that works. Uh, Cardi's just such a small presence on this song, I feel, that uh, despite the fact that the parts that he does here are good, it doesn't make up for the fact that most of this track is focused around a really kind of subpar Kanye feature. I mean, admittedly, it's a fair bit better than most of the stuff he's put out over the past couple of years, but even still, it's really... Um, 
mediocre, I guess. Nothing about it is really all too stand out, and it's just really distracting when compared to the very consistent feel that the rest of this project has, especially given that it's the second song on the record. The first track is a really great opener here, and then I'm just completely taken out of the project for a couple minutes before being launched back in at full speed into some of the best tracks on the project, and just really awkward, especially given how lengthy the project is. This song could have easily been cut, but I'm guessing it was kept just because Kanye is a big name, and of course, uh, it would make sense to have you know a big feature like that on the project, and I'm sure the tracks didn't get a lot of attention because of that feature, but um, it, it was not a track that I personally cared for. But overall, I, I do care for the album as a whole. I think it's pretty interesting, though I do certainly still understand why people are split on the record in the way that they are, and I can certainly understand why some people wouldn't like this thing. Can we all just agree, though, to, to not be annoying about it on Twitter? I am sick and tired of people complaining about this record on Twitter, and... Uh, all that jazz. Can we just move on to the next big record to uh, talk about? Because uh, this one isn't very exciting. But yeah, I think this record is still one that's worth checking out personally. This is a really good uh, trap rap project. This was my first time listening to a full record from 21, though I've heard uh, previous you know features and individual tracks from him in the past. And of course, I've heard some of Metro Boomin's production on previous songs and projects, things of that sort. So uh, this re this record here wasn't completely you know new to me when it comes to the sounds that both of these artists had going for them. But uh, through and through, this was a consistently enjoyable uh, record for me. I think the instrumentals on this thing that Boomin brings are really great. They have this really dark, ominous feel to them, but they also have at times almost like this luxurious edge to them, like just very high quality, just dark, moody trap instrumentals that I think are pulled off really nicely. And 21's uh, rapping over these instrumentals is really great too. I like the fact that he's able to deliver both really, uh, you know, cold uh, flows on this thing. He's able to deliver some more aggressive flows on this thing too. Uh, the hook work on this project is pretty decent as well. It's a project that doesn't really overstay its runtime. I do have maybe like a few nitpicks with this project. Uh, the Drake feature is uh, definitely the worst verse on the entire project. The uh, narration throughout this project can also get to be kind of annoying at times too. I think it works for like the introduction track and also the one instance it pops up as a skit later on. But uh, and some of the other instances where it pops up like at the end of some of the songs, didn't really care for it all too much. I do see how it adds to the atmosphere of the project, but uh, it did start to get a little bit grating after giving this album multiple listens. But overall, I think that this album is a really enjoyable listen. Uh, definitely one of the best trap albums that I've heard in recent memory, and one that if you like this kind of music, you should certainly give it a chance because, like I said, the production here is great, the rapping is pretty solid too, uh, the energy here on this record is there as well. It's just a great record if you're looking for some dark, moody trap music. I consider this group to be one of the more consistent uh, in metal when it comes to the quality of their releases. So I was looking forward to this record a fair bit. And I know quite a lot of people out there are really enjoying this record. Personally though, I really couldn't get into this record all too much. I don't think it's a terrible record or even like a bad record necessarily. I just think it's like painfully average as far as what this band is capable of doing. Mostly just because pretty much everything on this record just sounds like the core sound that, you know, defines this band, but just like that alone, there's really nothing else pushing it forward to make it a bit more interesting or special when compared to some of their older releases. And I do think the core sound of this band is one that is, you know, interesting, you know, that mix of alternative metal and dreamier pop textures. It's a sound that I do really like, and I still do enjoy that core sound here when listening to this project. It's probably the reason why uh, I still think this album is more listenable, listenable than it's not. But uh, still, these tracks just really had nothing to them that jumped out at me to be super interesting or special or standout or anything like that. The whole record just kind of blurred together in my mind because I just felt like so much of this project was similar to stuff that I've heard from this band before. I mean, again, there's not much on this thing that's really outright terrible. Probably the only part about this thing that I think I outright like disliked were some of the lyrics on the opening track where the band is just whining and complaining about both sides being wrong and all of that. And 
in all years, uh, 2020 is certainly not the year I want to hear that stuff. The year we've had to deal with, you know, anti-maskers and uh, all the like. Uh, especially given that uh, the guitarist of this band, I believe, will, came out as like anti-vax not long after this album came out. Uh, yeah, certainly a weird uh, position on the first track that kind of put me off of that song. But that's really the, like the only part of this record that I think I outright disliked. Everything else here... It's not bad, but at the same time, it's not really all that good either. It's just, like, painfully mediocre. Like, I can certainly listen to this thing. It works, like, okay, I guess, as background music, but I expect so much more from this group given uh, the quality of releases that they've put out uh, in the past. And, uh, yeah, hopefully next time around things will be a bit more interesting. <laughs> Overall, I think this is a very good record and a pretty interesting uh, project too when it comes to what it's trying to accomplish. Here on this record, Open Mike Eagle is talking about uh, stuff like the divorce that he recently went through as well as the cancellation of his TV show too and a lot of the uh, negative feelings and the trauma that came along with that and trying to start anew and oftentimes throughout this project he's using fiction, particularly anime, as uh, a way of you know understanding and explaining in a way uh, everything that's like going on around him. That's where the title of this record comes from and I think this idea is one that works out pretty nicely. I think that uh, the lyrics are on this record for the most part do a really good job at uh, discussing all of these different things. Whether it be, you know, tracks on this thing where he's using uh, fiction as a way to like better understand his life and like compare it to his own experiences like on the first couple of tracks on this thing, Death Parade and Headass or uh, moments on this thing where he's uh, using it as like a form of empowerment or something that he could uh, just uh, feel inspired by on the track I'm a Joe Star or uh, even moments like the track the Black Mirror episode where he's talking about a Black Mirror episode ruining his marriage but as you listen to this track you get the feeling that he's well aware of the fact that the Black Mirror episode didn't really ruin his marriage as much as it may be just like was a catalyst for, you know, the marriage falling apart in a sense, and really a lot of those faults were there to begin with. Funny enough how uh, the one, one of the tracks on this thing that doesn't really deal with an anime specifically still cuts as one of the most potent cuts on this entire project. The uh, lyrics here on this project are just really great in this regard. You get that sense of anxiety and uncertainty and that desperation to at times feel inspired or fit into some kind of routine and get back to a sense of normalcy. Uh, the one song on this thing, Everything Ends Last Year, is just one of the most potent cuts I've heard on a record this year, with him talking in just really plain terms about everything, you know, falling apart from his marriage to his show, and how it's October and he's tired, and uh, he's talking about October 2019 here in this song, but uh, given that this album was released in October of 2020, um, and given the year that we've had in 2020, it still feels painfully relevant in a lot of ways. And I think a lot of people, while they won't relate to the specifics of the verses, they'll relate to the hook of this track. Uh, and even outside of October of 2020, even now in December of 2020 when I'm recording this, it's still uh, a very potent hook in a way. Uh, just because it really sums up the times well, I guess. I do have a few faults with this project. While I do think the lyrics on this thing and Open Mike Eagle's rapping are pretty great, I do think the hook work on this project is some of the weakest that he's had on a project so far, outside of some select cuts like Edge of New Clothes, for example, which has a really fantastic hook. Uh, a lot of the other tracks, the hooks are, you know, okay. None of them are really all that bad, but uh, they're not some of the most standout that he's had on projects before. Uh, the instrumentation at the, on this project tends to be a bit more low-key. Sometimes it does work to the track's benefit, other times it ends up making some instrumentals that could feel a little bit forgettable. And uh, the closer to this thing is a track that I can understand what it's trying to do. It's this live track of him performing with his son. It's this kind of cute moment at the end of the project where I see uh, he's trying to have like this happy memory with his son. And uh, I, I see how that ties into the greater ideas discussed here on the record, and I like how it ends the album out on like a really positive note in a sense, or at least a hopeful note in a way. But um, it's just not one of the more interesting cuts here, I guess. 
it's a track that I think I like more in concept than I do in execution. But uh, still, despite my complaints with this record, Anime Trauma and Divorce is a pretty great record from Open Mic Eagle, one that if you like hip-hop, you should certainly check out. There is a lot here to really enjoy. I don't think there's a lot of other records out there quite like this one when it comes to the stuff that they decide to talk about and the way that they decided to talk about it. I like King Gizzard quite a bit, though. They're a group that personally, at times, could be kind of hit or miss for me, mostly depending on what styles they are playing around with on a given project. You know, if they happen to pick a style of music I don't care for that much, the results may not be all that interesting to me. And in the case of this record here, KG, I think this album's sound and what they're experimenting with is pretty decent. It's mostly the band's core, you know, psychedelic, quirky style of rock music mixed with some Anatolian influences too, which I think uh, give this thing a nice unique sound. But uh, while I do think that the sound of this thing is one that's distinct and pleasant, I don't think it really adds a ton to what these songs are trying to do thematically or anything like that. Uh, like for example on a project like Infest the Rat's Nest, the refer to their last full length release, where I felt like the thrash metal sound of that project was used to really enhance the hellish post-apocalyptic uh, you know, themes that were being discussed on that project. That's not quite the case here on this record. Uh, the styles of music they're playing around with are mostly just to give this thing a nice sound for the most part, and for the most part I think it actually does sound nice and give this record, you know, a decent uh, amount of quality to it. I enjoy listening to the majority of this record, though I don't end up thinking that it's one of the more standout moments in this band's discography. And I do think there are some tracks on this thing that are kind of average, you know, pleasant on the ear, but nothing super memorable. And even some tracks that uh, I just really didn't enjoy all that much. Uh, for example, Straws in the Wind was a track that does have some interesting things going for it, but it just felt kind of long and bloated and overstayed its welcome for me. And then you also have the track, I believe it was Intrasport, which uh, has a lot of those genres that I mentioned previously, but also seems to try to incorporate like dance music into it, and the result is just like super awkward, and I, I didn't like it at all really. Though, to counter these moments on the record, you do have some standout tracks on this thing, like Automation, for example, which is this really great, catchy track, or the heavy closer to this thing, The Hungry Wolf of Fate, a really great closer to this project. Overall, I think KG is a decent release. Like I said, not one of the greatest in this band's catalog. I think if you're looking for music like this that the band has done, you could probably find some other records in their catalog that are kind of close to the sound of this release, but um, just a bit more interesting, I guess. Uh, but still, it's not terrible by any means. It's worth giving a listen to if you like these guys. Uh, yeah, decent album in my opinion. This album uh, is a pretty interesting one. It's the third full-length project Blady has dropped this year, but his first with producer Mechatok, and it's a pretty interesting one because it sees him uh, experimenting with electropop instead of his typical cloud rap style. His delivery here on this thing is more suited for conventional pop music, but still has that very nasally sound that he's known for. I know it's a sound that could be pretty hit or miss for a lot of people. Personally, I really like it, and I still really like it here as well. I like how he's able to fit these instrumentals in a way that feels natural, but at the same time, he doesn't sacrifice any of his, you know, typical personality at all here on these songs. He definitely sounds like himself still. The production here on this thing is really nice, very sleek, uh, very glitzy sounding too, just uh, some very nice pop instrumentals I think suit Blady rather well. The hooks here on this album are also very catchy too, and the entire project uh, wraps up in a really concise and short runtime, which is also pretty appreciated. So overall, I think this is a pretty interesting project. I don't think it's one of Blady's greatest releases or anything like that. Out of the three that he's dropped this year, it's probably my least favorite. But still, I think it's pretty enjoyable, and I do think it's a very interesting experiment. And uh, if he wants to play around with this sound again at some point in the future, I'd still be very interested in checking that out, because I think that there's still more he could possibly do in this sound if he wanted to. This is a pretty solid album in my opinion. I think that Quelle Chris and Chris Keys do a good job here on this project at uh, really meshing their two sounds together and making a project that's for the most part enjoyable 
from start to finish. The production here on this thing is really great. It has this warm, at times, jazzy sound to it. It's just very comforting to listen to, and Quelle Chris's flows and deliveries over these instrumentals are also really great, too. His uh, vocal style, his delivery, just, I think, pairs up really nicely with that warm sound of the instrumentals and really adds to that nice, kind of cozy feel that much of this record has to it. Uh, but when it comes to, you know, the technical delivery of uh, his flows, I think he's also doing a really great job uh, in that regard on this thing, too. And his lyrics here are pretty solid as well. Uh, I do think that this project has an issue with being maybe a little bit bloated at certain points. I especially feel like the opening couple of tracks here are maybe a little bit unnecessary. Uh, they have some skits going on in them that I just couldn't really enjoy all that much, especially on repeated listens. But uh, for the most part, the core body of this project is one that is really enjoyable, and I really appreciate the sound of this project, too. Overall, this is definitely a solid record if you like hip-hop. I think the production here on this thing is pretty great. The vocal performances, the rapping, all of that is really solid, too. The features are pretty solid as well. So yeah, if you like hip-hop, definitely give this a listen. This is a really great EP, in my opinion, one of the best to come out this year. The instrumentals here on this thing have a really dark atmosphere to them that I really enjoyed. And uh, there are some moments in the instrumentals to these tracks that I also found to be kind of catchy and memorable too, which seems kind of odd given that this isn't like a pop release by any means, but uh, yeah, there's just a lot of really memorable moments packed into the instrumentals of these songs that just kept me coming back to this thing over and over again. The instrumentals here just have a great atmosphere to them and they're really textured in a way that just jumps out to me every time I listen to this thing. And the vocals do a great job at pairing up with these instrumentals too, having a similar dark, anxious feel to them as well. And the lyrics here on this project are pretty great too. Uh, overall, this EP is, like I said before, one of the best of the year for sure. You get a lot of really high quality music packed into a pretty short runtime. If you're a fan of dark wave like this, check it out. Zeal and Ardor are a group that I found myself fascinated with over the past few years just because I find their general sound, their mix of black metal and spirituals to be one that's super interesting and original and uh, just really captivating. And this new EP from them here is another fantastic release from these guys, one of my favorites from them in fact. You know, despite the fact that this is a short release, does not mean that it's an unimportant one by any means because this is one of the hardest hitting releases in this band's catalog and one of the hardest hitting releases of this year as a whole. When it comes to the instrumentals here on this project, you're getting a lot of that mix of genres that I mentioned previously. You're really getting all of it packed into this EP's really short runtime. And while I wouldn't necessarily say that there's a ton that's super new for the band here in the instrumentals, it's all performed so well and the compositions are so uh, well put together and interesting that uh, it makes for just some really fantastic uh, blends of sounds here on this thing, though. The most standout part of this entire project is hands down the lyrics and themes of this project. The group has always in the past on various songs and projects talked about themes of black empowerment, racism, things of that sort, and here on this project they're still talking about that stuff, though they're more particularly inspired by the murder of George Floyd and the protests that resulted from that, and it leads to some of the most potent lyrics in this band's discography and just of the year generally speaking. For example, the opening track to this thing, Vigil, is a track that, uh, whereas most uh, album openers start out with a really loud bang, a really energetic song or something like that, this track is slower, it's more plodding, and there's just a ton of anxiousness and uh, just fear packed into the feel of this song and the lyrics here are some of the most uh, gut-wrenching on the entire project but in a way that you just absolutely need to hear them and this song as a result ends up being one of the most memorable and hard-hitting on a release that I've heard this year despite the fact that like I said before it's not a super energetic opener to the project or anything like that or a super loud opener but Man, it sticks with you in a completely different way. The lyrics to the other tracks here on this record follow uh, the trend of this opening song really nicely. They're some of the best written I've heard this year, some of the most potent too. Uh, so yeah, overall, if you're looking for great releases from 2020, especially metal releases from 2020, then you need to check out this EP. Uh, 
as quickly as possible because it's one of the best uh, projects to come out this year for sure. Fantastic instrumentals, a fantastic mixture of sounds here. Some of the best lyrics I've heard on a project this year, regardless of genre and release format. Yeah, give this thing a listen as soon as possible because it is fantastic. Overall, this is a pretty solid pop release from this year. Day has a pretty interesting uh, sound here on this thing, essentially mixing some elements of indie pop, some electronic elements as well with this almost hazy feel at times too. I think it creates a really solid atmosphere for this entire project, and I like how this album feels very cohesive as a result of that. I think the vocal performances on this project are really beautiful. I think the instrumentals are equally beautiful and they pair up with the vocals really nicely. The lyrics on this album are pretty great too. I do think that there are some points on this project that could feel uh, maybe a little unnecessary or maybe a little bit bloated, but still, I don't think that this problem really gets in the way of my enjoyment of this record all that much. If you like pop music and you're looking for something that uh, kind of falls under that indie pop umbrella, I think that this album is one that you should certainly give a listen to. While we're talking about Katie Day, though, let's also talk about the second record she dropped this year with Debbie McCallion, best known as being one half of the now defunct Black Dresses, also uh, an artist who has released material under various other names, including the Girls Rituals name, where she dropped another album earlier this year. This is the uh, fourth full-length project that she has been a part of that released this year. And uh, I like the previous ones from both of these artists. And I really like this collaborative album as well. I think it's a masterfully put together indie pop release. I think these two have a lot of great chemistry when it comes to their vocal performances here on this record. I like the fact that the album has a really nice flow to it. Like I really appreciate how the start track and the end track to this thing have this almost noisy flair to them, but everything that kind of falls in between these two tracks are a bit calmer, not really quite as noisy. It gives this album a very defined structure that I just found really interesting. The instrumentals here sound really great, striking a nice balance between various aspects of indie pop, electronic music, and those first and last tracks, like I said before, even some like industrial tones too on occasion. Uh, it's a pretty interesting mix of sounds, but one that I think goes over very nicely. The hooks on this record are really solid too. The lyrics here are uh, wonderfully written as well, and I like how this whole record has this kind of dark, grounded feel to it So when it comes to the tone of the lyrics. But there's also a little bit of hope mix in there as well. It's this really nice, organic balance between the two that I feel like a lot of uh, records try to achieve, but maybe not quite as just authentically as this one does. I don't know, when I listen to this thing, it just feels very genuine and heartfelt, everything that I'm taking out of this project, and I just really appreciate that, and it feels like a really personal record as a result of that. Uh, yeah, overall, this is just a really fantastic release, in my opinion, and it comes together in a pretty short, concise package, too, and I also, you know, really like when albums are able to do that as well and not feel super bloated. So yeah, if you like indie pop, definitely give this thing a listen, because... Every track on this record is fantastic. One of my favorite albums of the year, for sure. Check it out. This EP is the fourth uh, release this year that Ada Rook has partaken in. I've enjoyed the previous three quite a lot, so I was looking forward to this new EP as well. And uh, once again, this ended up being another great project from her, in my opinion. This project, uh, stylistically, certainly shares some qualities with some of the material she dropped earlier this year, especially the album she released under her own name from earlier this year, but it also has its own unique qualities to it as well that I found myself really enjoying. For one thing, I think that the sound of this project does a nice job at mixing together various elements of like indie pop, various electronic elements too, some noisier industrial tones at some moments as well, but I wouldn't consider this to be a super heavy release overall or anything like that. I think if anything, this project has a more hazy, at times even kind of nostalgic feel to it, especially the opening track on this thing. This track is just uh, one that I'm absolutely in love with. I love the atmosphere of this song, the way the vocals here are barely understandable with how this track uh, plays out. It just creates this almost dreamlike feel to it that I find myself completely in love with. 
Of course, the other three tracks on this record are by no means bad songs. In fact, I think all three of them are quite amazing songs in their own way. I think they do a good job at expanding on some of the themes and topics that this EP is trying to cover. And when it comes to the themes and topics being uh, discussed here, this EP is mostly talking about places, particularly unfamiliar places and uh, things related to that. And I think that uh, a lot of the lyrics here on this project are up to the same level of quality that Rook has showcased in previous releases of her, especially from this year. And I think she's able to do a nice job at uh, providing a really laser-focused collection of tracks here on this thing that stick to one core topic. And I think it just creates a really cohesive feel to this EP. It feels like uh, not just a collection of four random songs that just so happen to be great, but more so a, you know, a, a real piece of art in its own uh, way, an experience that you should experience from start to finish, and if you haven't experienced this EP yet, I highly recommend that you change that because, yeah, overall, it's a fantastic release. Check it out. This project is the extension, uh, slash, like, second side of Eminem's Music to be Murdered By that was released earlier this year. This is the first time on the channel, I believe, that I'm talking about one of these, like, expansions, uh, you know, full album-length expansions to an existing album that have been happening quite a lot this year. I'm going to be treating them as separate albums on the channel going forward just because that seems to be how most people are treating them on their own channels and the like, so I'm just going to follow along with that. And, uh, yeah, to go get back to the actual album at hand here, uh, I didn't like the first mu music to be murdered by at all, and uh, that's still very much the case here with the side B to the project for pretty much the exact same reasons here, because a lot of the faults of that side A and really a lot of the faults that were on projects like Revival and Kamikaze are also present here on this album too. The production for the most part here is really terrible. Eminem's rapping is technical, but in a way that doesn't really sound good on the ears. The hooks on this album are pretty abysmal. The lyricism here on this project is pretty terrible too. You know, lots of attempts at humor that aren't funny, lots of attempts at being shocking that are just eyebrow worthy, lots of attempts at uh, trying to say something deeper or meaningful that just don't really land the impact for one reason or another. The features on this project either suck or sometimes at best are mediocre. And uh, yeah, this is just a really unpleasant listen from start to finish. The only positive that this has over the original release is that it's shorter. And uh, even still, I think the actual selection of songs here on this thing is probably worse than that of the uh, original album release. So I still think I actually like this release less than just the original standard album. And the thing is, when listening to this project, I think one of the biggest faults behind this album and the original release of this album and really just this whole era of Eminem generally speaking going back to Revival is just that it seems like he doesn't have like a focus for what he wants to do in his music uh, you know like he does on some previous releases in his discography because you know there'll be moments here in the lyrics that just you know frequently contradict each other with what he's trying to do there'll be tracks where he's you know like for example there's one track here where he's apologizing to Rihanna for uh, some of the lyrics that he had leaked a while back that uh, said some not so great things about her and you know he's trying to be all apologetic on that front but at the same time he's also being the guy on the album who's saying offensive stuff and making fun of people for being offended there's other moments on this project where he you know uh, try to talk about deeper serious pieces of subject matter but at the same time he'll use those same pieces of serious subject matter as like the punchlines for jokes and he'll be, there'll be moments on this project where he's making fun of the newer class of rappers, talking down to them. But there's other moments where he's just, you know, writing over straightforward trap instrumentals and modern uh, sounds and even having modern rappers featuring on his songs. So it's like, what is he getting at here on this project? He contradicts himself pretty frequently here. And personally, it just seems like he doesn't really know what to do with himself at this point, And he's just kind of throwing everything he can think of um, onto a project to see what sticks with people, but uh, as the reception to these most recent albums have shown, most people either love them if they're like hardcore fans, or they tend to hate them, and uh, that probably doesn't really give him good feedback when it comes to really focusing on what people want to hear uh, from him. You know, I don't think it's a shocker that Kamikaze is the best of these four recent releases of his because it's easily the most focused and the most 
purpose-filled of all those records, even if I felt like the purpose of that project was uh, just really uh, petty and kind of ridiculous. At least it was a purpose, and it gave that album focus. This album, on the other hand, uh, not whatsoever. And the fact that the music itself is just unpleasant to listen to as well, well, you just get a, a terrible album overall. Yeah, avoid this one, much like the first uh, music to be murdered by. This is a pretty interesting record from Liturgy, one that, uh, in terms of the sounds that are being played around with here, is just unlike anything else that I think I've really heard in recent memory. Liturgy's always been a group that has experimented with various different sounds and mixed them together with a black metal sound, but here on this project, yeah, black metal's still there, as are many of the other sounds that this group has played around with in the past, as well as some other new sounds too, but the way it's all mixed together here on this thing, it's just a lot more, I guess, uh, chaotic in a sense than ever before, uh, to the point where it almost feels like calling this a black metal record with lots of other influences uh, isn't even really accurate anymore. It just feels like a bunch of different styles put together here. But mind you, I mean this in a very good way. I think the mixture of sounds here on this project actually ends up working really nicely uh, to make a cohesive listen from start to finish. An important thing to note about this release is that this album is an opera uh, which narratively uh, expands on lots of topics discussed on previous liturgy releases serving as an origin story of sorts. Personally, I've never really been that invested in the liturgy uh, lore, uh, personally, but I do think that the narrative on display here through this opera piece uh, from some of the descriptions for this thing on the Bandcamp release page, uh, I can kind of see what this album is going for narratively, uh, with it being as like this origin story of sorts with divine beings and all of that. You can really, uh, I guess, feel what's going on here in the music as you listen to the individual pieces here on this project. And I think uh, that makes this thing pretty engaging. I like how the flow of this thing just feels almost just story-like in nature and how the project is able to convey this uh, beyond just the lyrics here on this record. Because there's many pieces here on this project that are instrumentals or maybe do have some lyrics but are mostly instrumental. And I think, feel like the sound of this record is really what's pushing this whole project forward. And of course, when it comes to the sound of this release, like I said before, there's quite a lot going on here. Of course, you have the black metal, which Liturgy has always based its sound on, but you also have a whole bunch of other stuff mixed in there too. You have lots of glitchy electronics, which the band has explored before. You have some jazz influences at some points on this thing. You even have like some trap influences here on this record too, which sounds like, uh, you know, when you put all this together on a record, it sounds like a recipe for disaster, but it's played out really nicely, like I said before, because uh, there's a lot of restraint when it comes to what sounds are paired up with each other and how these sounds work within the greater context of the narrative here and how everything flows together. It feels like a very natural experience when I'm listening to this thing, despite the fact that, you know, on paper, there's quite a lot going on. So overall, I think that this is a pretty interesting metal release and one that if you're a fan of experimental metal, you should certainly check out. I don't think it's a release that's necessarily going to be for everyone, given uh, a lot of the oddity of this release, but I think it's one worth giving a chance to at least, because I think there is a lot to really enjoy here, and if you do enjoy this thing, I think you're going to get a lot out of it. I would consider myself a pretty uh, big fan of Aesop Rock's work. I especially liked his last full-length album he released under his own name, The Impossible Kid, back in 2016, and also that collaborative record he dropped with Tobacco last year, Malibu Ken. I thought both of those were really interesting projects, so I was excited to see what he would do on his next full-length release, and overall I think this is a good release, but I do feel like it's one of the weaker releases in Rock's catalog. Uh, for the most part, this does a lot of what you've come to expect from him at this point. You know, a lot of the rapping here on this thing is very technical, but in a way that sounds really nice on the ears. Uh, the lyrics here are very dense in a way that you'll be able to pick a lot out of it. And the production here is pretty quirky and abstract. The one thing I noted about the production here on this thing is that it does have the, a little bit of like a psychedelic influence to it at times. Not to the same extent that like Malibu Ken did, but um, it mixes like uh, the core production style that Ace of Rock has made himself known for with uh, some slight psychedelic influences that gives this thing its own, you know, slightly unique flavor to it. I don't think it's like the most striking thing, mostly because Malibu Ken, I think, did the whole psychedelic 
instrumentals with Aesop Rock a bit better, but uh, this record does have, you know, its own little thing going for it. I just think the biggest issue with this record is that, like I said before, it's nothing really groundbreaking from Aesop Rock. It's pretty much uh, more of the same that you're getting from him that you've gotten on previous releases. I like the core stuff that he does, like all those elements I've mentioned previously, but I just kind of feel like at this point in his career, I need a bit more from him to really, you know, stay invested in a project like this, especially given how lengthy this album is, you know, over 20 tracks and over an hour in length. It just feels exhausting because you're getting this pretty big chunk of, you know, lyrically dense hip hop and uh, like halfway through, it just starts to feel like a bit too much. And I feel like this would have been a lot better had it been cut down to uh, some of the best tracks in a more concise version of the track list. The album's a core concept with like the whole spirit world field guide thing. Um, I do think it's kind of interesting on paper, but I didn't really find the execution of it all that interesting either. I think it's another thing that could have made this record a bit more interesting had it stuck the landing a bit better. But uh, it didn't quite work out for me in that way. And overall, I don't think this is a bad record by any means. I think it's pretty okay. It's pleasant on the ears for the most part. The production with the vocals can be a little tinny at times, but uh, it's not the biggest issue ever. Uh, yeah, it's a fine sounding record. It showcases a lot of what makes Aesop Rock a fantastic rapper, but I think he has a lot of other better releases in his catalog that are a bit more interesting and not quite as bloated as this release. So yeah, if you're a fan of his, definitely check this out, but if you haven't checked him out before, I recommend starting with a record like Labor Days or The Impossible Kid before this one. And overall, that sums up all of the projects that I wanted to cover here in today's video. Uh, this wasn't every single release I heard that I didn't have a chance to cover uh, prior to this video dropping, just the ones that I thought were most interesting and most, you know, worth talking about. You know, all the great albums I think you guys just need to hear, and uh, some of the releases from artists that I've kept up with over the years and that I had some strong opinions on. Uh, if you want to see my thoughts on maybe some of the other uh, releases I didn't have a chance to cover here, I am going to be having a list on my Rachel Music account uh, coming out once I drop my best albums of the year list uh, early next year. And uh, in there I'm going to have, you know, short little descriptions for everything I listened to over the course of the year, including some of those projects I didn't talk about here today. Uh, of course you'll have to wait for that list to drop in early January at some point, but uh, follow me on my Twitter account uh, if you want to find out when that's going to be, because I'll certainly be sharing with you guys on there when uh, that video is going to be coming out and when that list is going to be made public. So uh, yeah, that really sums up everything I have to talk about here today when it comes to these releases. Uh, if you happen to disagree with any of them, that's perfectly fine. In fact, if you leave your own thoughts on any of these releases in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, make sure you also subscribe to the channel for more music-related content. Uh, things like more album reviews, countdown lists, discussion videos. We're coming up on uh, the beginning of next year. And of course, year-end lists, like I said before, are going to be coming out. So if you want to see those, make sure you subscribe. Uh, yeah, that really sums up everything I had to share with you guys today. So once again, thank you for watching and stay golden.